Around 2010, certain concepts began to create buzz in Japan. One, Donjari, the art of decluttering, discarding, and parting with your possessions. Two, the simple life. Three, working and thinking like a nomad. The life-changing magic of tidying up by Marie Kondo was published in 2010 and became a smash hit. And many minimalists have since emerged. In my humble opinion, there were a few things happening in the background that led to this. One, information and material overload. Two, the development of technology and services that make it possible for us to live without as many possessions as we had in the past. Three, the great East Japan earthquake. I believe these key factors prompted people to start reconsidering the way they lived. Let's look at them one by one. Good morning from Seaside, Oregon. So last night we were exploring Ecola State Park. That's just right next to Cannon Beach. Uh, the plan was to head down to Cannon Beach and do some astrophotography. I've been there once before and they have this RV parking lot, which I think I've stayed the night before, but last night we pulled in and we got the knock on the door and were asked to leave. So I said, no problem. Jumped on iOverlander, tried to find another spot to camp for the night. There was only really one place in the National Forest. I looked at the reviews called God's Valley. It seemed like a long drive. It was about an hour deep into the forest. And a lot of the reviews said that the roads were kind of just small dirt roads. It didn't seem like a pleasant place to drive to uh, after dark. So I found another place uh, on iOverlander and some people were saying that they camped at Safeway in between the McDonald's and Safeway. So we drove over there and I didn't really feel comfortable staying there for the night because there were very few cars in the lot and uh, we just would have been too conspicuous and stuck out too much. So drove around some more and I found a couple apartments that I suppose we could have stayed at but for whatever reason I decided to keep exploring and uh, drove close to the river and spotted another RV parked on this like side street and uh, there was an empty lot in front of the parking area so I knew it would be fine I wouldn't be disturbing anybody so that's where we spent the night it was actually pretty quiet Seaside is an awesome town to explore if you haven't been here there's a lot of nice touristy spots places to get food and coffee and uh, there's this awesome long promenade um, along the ocean so this morning Kirby and I just went for a little bit of a walk you know I was just meaning to take him out to do his morning routine but we ended up doing like a three or four mile just walk around seaside exploring the beach uh, people are super friendly other dog owners and we just had a great time uh, I really like this town actually I, I forgot how awesome it is highly underrated town I know most people just come, come down the coast and go straight to Cannon Beach, but stop through Seaside and uh, there's plenty of places to stealth camp, you know, pick up your supplies. And after COVID, uh, it'll probably be a, a fun town to explore and just, you know, do fun stuff at. So today I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I'm gonna drive around Seaside some more, see if there's some other fun activities to do here. And then we're gonna try and make our way over to Cannon Beach. I wanna get stopped there and take some sunset photos over there by Haystack Rock. It's kind of nice not having a plan or any kind of like itinerary to follow. We're just here kind of doing what we do, enjoying van life. So we'll catch up with you in a bit.
We're here at Rocky Creek Viewpoint, and there's no overnight camping signs up as of today. So I found this place on OI Overlander, and it says that uh, others have camped here, so we're gonna give it a shot. And this is what van camping is all about. Hearing the sounds of the ocean in the background, <laughs> you really can't beat this. I'm gonna take care of for one last squirt. And then we're going to call it a night. Right, buddy? So we're here in Bandon, Oregon. I've driven by Bandon a million times, coming up to 101. <laughs> and for some weird reason, I've not stopped at Face Rock Viewpoint, which you can kind of see behind me. Um, there's a ton of awesome sea stacks here, and just a, a ton of like sea life and wildlife. It's beautiful. Um, I highly recommend stopping in Bandon, checking out Face Rock Viewpoint. In the perfectly ordinary life are the same thing as the light, which is sort of undifferentiated and overwhelmingly brilliant. The same energy that seems to you light in that state, pure light, then you understand is just what you're looking at. That sitting in this room, you are sitting bang in the middle of the beatific vision. And you see, from this point of view, there's nothing ordinary about it at all. Wow, we. <laughs> so the Zen poem, supernatural power and marvelous activity. So we're down here on the southern coast of Oregon uh, at a place called Arch Rock. It's in one of my favorite areas of Oregon called the Samuel H. Boardman Corridor. There's a lot to see here. There's the natural bridges. There is Gold Beach, Pistol River, Harris Beach. And uh, you've probably seen a lot of these locations on Instagram if you're an Instagram person. <clears throat> because there, there's just an overwhelming amount of subjects and interesting things to photograph down here. It's, I've said it before, but I think Oregon is America's Iceland. It really is a photographer's paradise here with all the waterfalls, the mountains, the, the picturesque lakes, and the amazing amount of sea stacks and wild beaches here in southern Oregon. I've been coming here for almost five years now. I think my first trip was down the coast in the middle of April um, with a motorcycle. It was one of my bucket list dreams to, to drive down the 101 from Washington all the way down to San Diego following Pacific Coast Highway. It was freezing then as it is now. <laughs> it was very cold. But I got to experience one of the most amazing scenic byways uh, that the U.S. has to offer. If you haven't been up and down the West Coast before, you know, book, book a couple weeks off and take your time with it. There's a lot to see. There's a lot of cool, small coastal towns and just, 
you know, your jaw will be dropping like every five minutes, I swear. It's mine was and, and it still does every time I come out here. The weather hasn't been awesome. It's been rainy, it's been overcast, it's been very cold. But Kirby and I are making the most of it. We're in between all the crappy weather. We are getting some nice sunsets and you know there has been some breaks in the rain so we can enjoy it we are just up in florence oregon where you have the uh, sand dunes national recreation area and we had a good solid day there on the beach of just nice sunny weather i'm planning to stop there on my way back up to washington and see if i can ride my e-bike we'll see if the weather cooperates or not but put this on your list if you haven't already um so yeah, we're going to hope that this weather clears up a little bit. I want to make some lunch, and then hopefully we'll get some nice sunset colors, and I'll, I'll go out and uh, shoot some, some sea stacks and see what we can get. Hakuin, the 17th century master, writes in one of his poems, he uses the phrase, taking hold of the no thought in the midst of thoughts. So that means having a mind that is in a way like a mirror. Zhuangzi, the Chinese Taoist, said the perfect man employs his mind as a mirror. It grasps nothing, it refuses nothing, it receives but does not keep. And so the poem says, The wild geese do not intend to cast their reflection. The water has no mind to retain their image. So it is a mind in it, as it then that is, has no attachments. Now attachment is a word uh, that has associations in English which do not quite, doesn't quite give the Buddhist feeling the meaning of the word. But the slang term that we now use, a hang up, is the right translation for attachment. When you say a person's all hung up, or he has a particular hang up, that is the Buddhist meaning of attachment means a mental fixation 